$43 billion is the official amount that China will spend on the Beijing Olympic Games. Some have called it China's global coming out party, others one of history's most expensive PR campaigns. But according to former political prisoner Professor Min Chi Li, all the dazzle of the Olympic Games does not cover the growing social inequality in China. Senior editor Paul Jay spoke with Professor Min Chi Li. Welcome, Min Chi. Thank you. Uh, Min Chi, uh, you were involved yourself in the protests in Tiananmen Square, and uh, after that, you went to prison for some time. Uh, could you talk a little bit about those experiences? What, what did those protests represent, and why did you go to jail? Well, uh, let's say, uh, first answer the short question. And it's in 1990, not 89, on June 3rd, about the one year occasion of the uh, 1989 thing. And I was giving a speech at a student assembly within the Beijing University uh, campus. And then uh, I was arrested and later sentenced to two year imprisonment. And, what, and what, so, what, what, what did you say in that speech that the authorities didn't like? Well, basically uh, criticizing the uh, government, uh, advocating uh, workers' democracy. And uh, uh, so that, that was seen as an uh, anti-government speech. What, what did you mean when you said they were attacking workers' democracy? It's uh, out of a very spontaneous student assembly. And I only had a chance to speak for three or four minutes. So really just a few short sentences. And I was like uh, 21 years old. You were jailed for four sentences. Right, right. What, what were those sentences? As far as I can recall, I uh, said, uh, argued for uh, workers' democracy, workers' control of the state-owned enterprises, uh, democratization of the uh, education, uh, politics, as far as I can recall, yeah. Now, if you made the same kind of speech today, would you, would you still fear for arrest or have things changed? Well, depending on the nature, because the, at the time, you know, it's the, the spontaneous student assembly itself was obviously a protest related to the 1989 thing. By 1989, you mean the big protests in Tiananmen Square and that whole movement? It's not, well, the, the, back to 1989, we are talking about not just one protest, it's a series of uh, protest movements that lasted about two months. So my question is, uh, that was a very uh, politically charged time. The authorities felt uh, uh, besieged. Uh, now people say things have relaxed, things have changed. Uh, to some extent, how much have they changed? In, in today's China, could you still be arrested for making a three or four minute speech? Well, depending on the content of the speech, then, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, if I call for the overthrow of the Chinese government, then obviously I would get arrested. And otherwise, it depends on how you are going to deliver your speech. And certainly things have changed a lot uh, since then, but I would not say in general things have changed for better for the majority of the Chinese population. But things might have changed for better for some of the, uh, let's say, relatively privileged section of the Chinese population. Uh, including the uh, intellectuals from all uh, different uh, political perspectives. The Olympic uh, opening ceremonies were stunning. China saying this system works. If you just look at the celebrations, in terms of the message they wanted to send with those celebrations, they were extremely successful. This is modern, rising China, uh, sophisticated, benign, uh, a threat to no one, uh, and more, most importantly, perhaps, uh, the future vision of sort of uh, bringing the best of consumerism to millions and millions of Chinese people. So this is the vision that they painted for us. Uh, how, real is the, how real is that? Obviously, there seems to be a consensus in the media. Uh, this is a, a spectacular success about this opening ceremony. And... Uh, uh, I checked the Chinese websites within China. Uh, most of them seem to be enthusiastic about this, but there are also a few dissenting voices. For example, someone questioned the celebration of Confucianism, the celebration of the uh, Confucian ritual, and uh, they uh, point out that this Confucianism thing is a symbol of obedience, subservience, op oppression. 
And instead of uh, peace and harmony, and it's quite ironic that uh, at the moment when this Olympics is celebrating uh, supposedly peace and harmony, a war is breaking out in Georgia. And uh, there are also others who point out that there are uh, many among the Chinese, for example, the uh, uh, the workers and peasants, and uh, uh, who have lost their jobs, uh, or even some middle class uh, members who are struggling to pay the mortgage, uh, are not necessarily so enthusiastic about this Olympic thing. And also, some people point out that those migrant workers who help to build those wonderful architecture for this Olympic will not be among the privileged audience. Min Chi, in the, next, in the next segment of our interview, let's discuss just who are the winners, who are the losers of this new Chinese uh, expansion, and, uh, and just what does this harmonious society really mean. Right. Uh, please, please join us for the next segment of our interview with Min Chi Lee.